this is uh, Ermine Street up here. Um, we did the excavation in, in two sort of short stages. We, we, had, we had to wait for this building on the right to be demolished. Um, so we started so we started with this stripping and then we spend quite a lot of time when you're digging um, in the more urban context doing a lot of cleaning because the archaeology um, was very dense because it's been an area that's been occupied for a very long time. So we have to do a lot of cleaning by hand. You see that lonely figure on the left with a hoe. Um, so it's great about trying to work out where, where the features are and what we need to do. Um, here, this sort of section that's dug in here is the, is the remnant of one of the test pits that we did in the evaluation. Um, so we, we take all of the disturbance out of that as well and clean those so we can locate the features that we'd already looked at. Um, and then to the left there, uh, is, is the base of a modern cellar. This is actually a concrete slab lying in the bottom. So that's why there's two big holes in the ground there. And that, that sort of process takes a couple of weeks because it's, it's you know, sort of at this stage in the excavation, sort of trying to work out the basic sequence and like the, the highest point that archaeological remains are surviving at. So yeah, this is more cleaning. Um, this was, we started on site in uh, middle of March um, and spent uh, probably about the first month on about this level identifying late medieval and post medieval features. Um, one of the more um, obvious features that we found was uh, a large, quite a large, nice area of burning, which was which was a hearth. You can see these burned clay and these blackened burned deposits. Um, they, once we clean these up, we start to dig sections through features like that. This is lying on top of a, sort of a medieval soil layer. Um, there's no evidence of any structures around it, which isn't to say they weren't, they weren't ever there. It might have just been truncated away, or it could have been perhaps a half associated with a more uh, ancillary structure, something a bit more temporary. But, um, this is a nice feature that we found in the, in the sort of the, on the, the southernmost corner of the urban street side of the site. Um, the scales, the, there'll be a lot of scales in these photographs. These, these are two metre long scales, just to give you an idea of the size of the feature. Um, and we, we put chalkboards in the photographs, so we've got identifying to identify it in order to identify the features when we come to the post-excavation. Um, so you have a site code, and context numbers, and direction arrows, which show which angle, where the shot's been taken from. Um, so that's, again, that was, that was quite a nice feature to find high up late medieval half. And then we start digging sections through these features. We put the sections in um, in order to sort of be, a, be able to see the layers as they've accumulated over time. Um, so when, as we were digging this, we were able to identify different phases of burning and the way that the, this, this half had been emptied out and re recut almost, and then more burning, and then these compacted layers of clay put down and then burning on top of them. So these quite odd looking cuts that we put in are there for a reason. We do it's, it's in order to work out the order in which the deposits are built up. Um, so we do it in stages, so that was the first initial quadrant, and then we take out take out the other side. So this was from the last photo, this is from the other direction. And you can see these these burn red patches, which are uh, patches of burned clay. A lot of um, late medieval pottery from this particular feature, which gives it a nice, which makes it very easy to date. Um, it was one of, one of the latest um, undisturbed features on the site. You can see a few bits of pottery on the, in the corner there that have been collected up as the, as the site was dug. Um, that's, a, sorry, that's a 50 centimetre scale again to give you an idea of the size of the feature. So, um, Okay, and then we, once, once that's done, we draw the sections and we, we make, we draw plans um, in quite cold weather in this instance with gloves and hats and all sorts. Uh, the section line, these string lines, again, it's a, a, the section lines we put in when we start to dig, we have to stay, stay straight. Um, the buckets in the top corner you can see are sample buckets and we take, um, we take samples of the material that we've excavated, which we then send back to. Um, we've got a site at Bourne where we process the samples and we float um, 
the residues in order to find child plant remains, any sort of small finds we might have missed. You get lots of things like um, small animal bones, fish bones, and those all sort of enable us um, to build up a picture of, of the, the local environment and what people were in terms of what people were consuming, how they were living. So we, we took from this site because it was its deposits were very deep and well stratified and also waterlogged because the water table as you probably know in Huntington is, is quite high so you get very good preservation sometimes of uh, plant remains um, which is really useful uh, and able to say a lot about the, the way people were living and the environment they were living in. Um, one of the other features that we found or the set of features that we found, I'm not sure you can see, it's not so clear um, at this level. There's a problem actually with starting this high. The, the soil and the material gets very well worked over time and the higher you get, the more worked it becomes. So these features aren't particularly clear. There's a two metre scale. Um, you see um, perhaps three dark lines coming down here. These are located, um, this is the modern cellar, so this is looking southwards. Um, we weren't entirely sure what they were, but um, sort of looking into it, you know, they're very similar to features that have been seen up at Norwich. State. Southampton, so quite near Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, which have been interpreted, interpreted as um, associated with stables, perhaps. Um, I don't know if anyone does horse riding, but where you store your horse. Um, <laughs> Horse parking bays, absolutely. But yeah, so and which is quite interesting because we did actually we found horse remains um, further along the the route of the link road, and we also had samples which contained large quantities of oats and quite a lot of straw as well in the base of some features. So there was some suggestion at this early stage that we may we may have had like either inns or stabling um, in the locality, which would make sense along a main route like Early Street. These are quite nice features, again, they're similar, similar date to the half that you just saw, um, late medieval. Um, the horse, this is its <laughs> buried, it's actually been buried, and um, it was buried further to the south, maybe about 100 metres further down the, away from Urban Street along the link road. Um, when we were on the site there, we, ha we did trial trenching along the length of the route just to make sure we hadn't missed anything. Um, and um, this this was found this was found down there. Um, again it's a post medieval uh, horse, so uh, 16th, 17th century probably. And um, one of the interesting things about it was it was definitely ridden. Um, the the teeth um, had sort of wear pattern which is um, common to sort of horses that ever have a bright or a bit between the teeth. So it's a horse that had been ridden. Um, quite speculative at this stage, but there's also on the first edition OS map buildings and a possible courtyard down um, close to sort of Ferris Road, and also a large tree at about the same point where this horse was buried, which is you know quite suggestive and sort of tantalising, like suggesting that maybe it was somebody like a favourite horse that's one of them part of the tree over. Again, that's something we, we, you know, we've only just started going through all the finds. But it's like an interesting little, this little thing, and it's uh, <laughs> quite a good example of how using, so especially when you get into the post-medieval period, uh, first edition and the early edition ordnance survey maps can start to reveal quite a lot, even of what's perhaps gone a little bit early. You still get like buildings and structures and land use, which, which maybe sort of harks back even further. Um, so this, this was a nice find, it was more or less isolated, there was very little evidence of any activity in this part of the site. Um, so we had this and a single pit, uh, but a lot of the rest of the route as you got towards the train, uh, the railway line, was very disturbed and we think probably as a result of the, the railway itself and there's also a lot of industrial buildings around there. So we didn't get a huge amount of finds um, from that part, but this was, this was a nice Nice thing to find quite early on in the exploration. Um, I just put this in because there's snow really in the corners <laughs> of the site, just to sort of just to try and get some pity. Um, but 
this is again this is quite early early in the excavation. We, we covered over parts of parts of the area when the, the building that was sort of located down here was about to be demolished in order just to protect the remains that everyone had painstakingly spent weeks cleaning. Um, Tam, who's here tonight, did a lot of cleaning on the site and uh, it wasn't particularly pleasant and it's very wet and it got very snowy and cold as well. But, um, this fenced off area here was actually um, a well that again is post medieval, we think probably very late 18th, probably 19th century. And we actually, when we, when we stripped away this um, concrete slab here, found another well on more or less the same line parallel with Irving Street. So these would have been in the back, backyards of the buildings that are on site. You can see this, the back edge of this building here. Um, so these were, these were, I'm not sure because we couldn't see into the buildings because of the, the demolition, whether there was any sort of evidence of them. Um, well, the buildings were still up, but yeah, they, they, these are quite nice features, uh, circular brick built wells. Um, we found more evidence of hearths and burning a little bit further to the south, um, just quite close to where those, those, those wells were that sort of gave before. Again, you've got these, these layers of ground material and clay packing, and there's a whole sequence of, sequence of pits. Uh, one in here, along the side here, and then up the top there. Um, again, this is this is a one meter scale here. So you can see these, these are about a meter in diameter. So similar sort of size to the to the hearths that we found closer to the road. Um, the this these little bags that are sort of scattered in this part of the site. Have actually, we decided to take. Um, Samples for um, trying to find evidence for any kind of metal working because we, we find we were getting pro samples processed as we worked, and for pe people were reporting back to us what we what was being coming out of the samples. And one of the things that we did start to find was metal working residues in hammer scale, which is sort of very small uh, spherical um, uh, drops of, sort of um, iron ore that have scattered away from metal working areas when somebody's working on a forge. Um, so we decided to just to try and do some sampling to see if we could uh, locate like a concentration sort of metal working. Um, in the end, we, we don't think this was actually um, a, like represented sort of any kind of furnace or metal working, an in situ metal working area. We're not, we wasn't weren't convinced, but we took the samples because it's a good it's a good way to sort of um, to narrow down. The, sort of the number of different interpretations you can put on a feature. Um, so you do these, you take these small bags of material and we, you do them on a grid pan basically, much like when we did test pits. So you do it as a, a, a controlled sample and then that allows you to plot, once you find out how much metal working residue, or whatever it is you're looking for, how much there is, you can see as it diminishes and you know, if you've got concentrations of material, that allows you to sort of more closely pinpoint where someone might actually have been metal working. So it's another, it's another aspect of our sampling that we do. It's, it's, it's got a lot of potential for helping us to interpret what was going on. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other thing that we found, again, that was late medieval, a bit further to the south, just further to the south, actually, where the sad Stuart is working is where the, the slide from before. Um, on this side of the site, and possibly continuing slightly underneath the edge of the excavation, um, there was a cobbled surface, which we think was probably part of a trackway that came off Ermin Street, which would have been somewhere about here, and right, running off away from par uh, perpendicular to the road. Um, it's really nice, not quite nicely preserved in places, with large, large er cobbled stones, and then areas where it had been. Um, uh, built up again and restored and um, I don't know if refurbished is the word, but they, you know this has been obviously been used and repaired over time. Um, the edge of the edge of it, we think, was probably about here. The this sort of dark line you can see is actually um, the edge of a modern foundation that truncated away the cobbles. So they're surviving up to this point and they're not not there. So we don't know how far out this cobble trackway actually would have gone, but. It's you know 
it certainly wasn't surviving or in evidence any much further this way. So we think probably coming up towards the road. We did find lots, quite a lot of stone and quite rounded work stone uh, all across the site, sort of in the vicinity of Irving Street itself. Um, and for a little while, I was sort of quite excited by the prospect of finding perhaps evidence for the Roman road, uh, because many, a lot of the features that were cut down at this level, which is sealed by medieval soil, uh, like the later medieval soil, um, weren't actually cut into a natural deposit. They're cut into a mixed, um, a, a mixture of sort of natural-looking material and more soil material. Um, again, in the event when we when we tried when we put sections across this material, we couldn't see anything that looked like a definite road, which is a shame. It would have been very nice to find find the Roman road itself. But we did find little bits of residual Roman pottery, um, more or less as you'd expect, because that close to the Roman road. So yeah, it's possible that um, the street, even if it you know, didn't lie within this area, is perhaps even along the line of the current the current street. Um, and this the, this cobbled surface is a lot later, sort of late, late late medieval. It was there we found quite a lot of um, um, late late fourteenth into the fifteenth century pottery, sort of pressed onto that layer, which is really nice sort of dating evidence to find. And so it dates that quite closely. Seeing this photo, this is a close up looking, um, looking sort of southeast. Um, you can see these large, these large, sort of quite rounded cobbles, and you know, patchy, patches of even larger material, uh, smaller material in between. <coughs> and then also this, this sort of orangey layer you can see with the label stuck into it, and the clay, bands of clay. So this cobbled, uh, this trackway been um, kept uh, viable for quite some time and then later probably post medieval pits cut through it here and here and again you can see quite a disturbance here where someone's at a later day probably once this has fallen out of use people have dug pits through this and obviously the stone is gone but there's you know there's a lot a lot there which look very nice once it's all cleaned up um, and it's a very nice nice find That's another, another view of it from the um, looking up towards Irving Street. Again, you can sort of get a rough idea of the, the surviving width of it from the person in the photo. And again, lots of big, big lots of cobbles. This dark band going through, or this dark intrusion here, is actually a modern drain that have been cut through and sort of destroyed the cobbles there. And again, probably associated with this brick foundation that's going into the bulk up there. Um, So once we've dealt with the and identified and sort of characterised the late medieval archaeology, the next thing to do is to was to um, dig by, by mixture of sort of machine and hands and a lot of hand digging um, through that layer to identify sort of any the early features. Um, this photo here. This is what once we've removed, recorded, planned, photographed the cobble, the trackway, then removed those layers, and we came down onto this this very dark band of soil. Um, again, you can see it here, um, which is uh, it's what is quite quite a common feature throughout a lot of Huntington on the outskirts, especially, which we've sort of interpreted as. Um, Accumulation of material sort of after the Black Death, because Huntingdon was had a particularly harsh visitation of the plague and contracted and sort of uh, quite a lot in the aftermath of that. And you get a lot of the area reverting to sort of far more arable and agricultural sort of activity. And you get these these build ups of soil where people where the, where this part of the town or this part of um, this area alongside Irwin Street is built more or less been abandoned in terms of any kind of activity and it's just reverted to sort of open open ground. And this, this band of soil um, extended most of the way back across the site. This you can see it's sort of deepening as you get away from the road. Irwin Street was on is on quite a high 
point and as you move away from Ernest Street the ground fall, falls away not sharply sharply but you know visibly um, and the actual road itself is, is just beyond you know, on the edge of this shot here and it's, it, it, it drops away and below this, this, this layer um, that it accumulates sealed a very dense sequence of pits and some ditches um, that were dated sort of mainly to the earlier medieval periods, probably post conquest through to sort of about the time of, of the plague, so into the, the 14th century. Um, and these guys had to remove a lot of this by hand, which is so it's no mean feat, but it was a lot of work over again, quite, quite some time, quite, took quite some time to get, to get it off. But because of the, just the sheer amount of archaeology that we had, there was no real sensible way of doing some of this stuff by machine, so it's you know, just a lot of shoveling and me hiding in the office. <laughs> so, that, so once we've removed um, that late medieval soil, um, we get this pop marking all across the side of a very large pits and a few ditches as well, um, which we've sort of tentatively identified as, uh, as plot boundaries with possibly the ditch that runs along the back here being representing uh, a back, like a, uh, a delineation of the, the back of the plots. Um, certainly up until um, someone decided to dig a big pit through here and then carry on digging pits to the south. We, we only came off on Friday and we had actually managed to get everything um, that we did digitised and onto plans on the computer. So there are actually more pits running down to so about this one, this solitary feature down in the corner there. Um, you can see that from this, that's 10 metres along there. So these, these features are all sort of between 4 and 5 metres across. i um, got some photos of the, the, the ones we've excavated, and they're quite deep, substantial features, and quite densely, um, quite dense all across the site. The, uh, the post-medieval well dimensions, one of them is here. It's, I don't know if you can see this sort of, sort of grey rectangle. And the other one was just here as well. So you can see, see the back, there again, they're in the back plots um, of the buildings fronting onto Vernon Street. We do, we, we produce these plans sort of by a mixture of um, like actual, like, is it, um, I'm a love eye. Um, GPS. GPS, that's the one. The satellites and magic. <laughs> it's beamed into this stuff here. Um, and then also the traditional sort of with hand tapes and um, pencils and pens. And <coughs> so we once again because it's so much there's so much archaeology, lots and lots of cleaning. Uh, and then we, we survey and we draw the features. We we, t we use a combination of, sort of digital survey and hand drawn survey because um, they both have they both have real benefits. So digital survey is, is really good for getting very accurately located um, site plans together. It's also, it's very quick as well. You can produce, you could sur survey that whole site in a, in, well, a half a day with the GPS, um, which enables us to sort of identify features and, and get and get actual printouts and plans that we can then work from very quickly. For more detailed work, we still do a lot of um, drawing on permatrace with pencils. Um, we, and that's, and it's, that's really useful for showing sort of, the, sort of the subtleties and the different relationships that, between features. Um, so yeah, we, we, use, we, use a mixture, we use a mixture of things. Um, and that's the site, again, this is at the end of the excavation, um, but that's the site looking um, from the south up towards Ermine Street, just going across the top of the site there. Um, as you see, these, these dark Blobs everywhere, the sections that we've excavated um, through these large pits. Um, the ground, we had a real mixture of weather on the site, so we went from very, very wet, uh, like that, <laughs> on some days, to back to, you know, and we had that, that was our last week on site, which was really lucky because it enabled us to get the site cleaned up and uh, look for these photographs. Um, you can see, yeah, we, we've dug sections all through these all, all through these features in order to try and identify what they were um, 
and the digging, the digging sections enables you to sort of get the, the overall shape of the features, which can be quite revealing in itself. Um, retrieve finds, and then the sections that we need in these vertical faces, we uh, we also draw, um, and that shows and that enables you to record the fill sequences of features, which again can tell you quite a lot about perhaps what they were used for, um, what happened to them when they fell out of use. Uh, and how you know even how, how long it took them to fill up and whether they were actually kept open. Um, the area, the sort of quite blank area in this corner of the site, there's quite a lot of modern disturbance. So there wasn't much archaeological surviving in this corner of the site. Hence why we dumped lots of spoil on it. Um, but it's as you can see, it's quite a dense sort of concentration of archaeology, and predominantly this this stuff is early and medieval uh, post-conquest since the 14th century. Um, that's earlier in the site when it was still very wet. You can see, um, I mean, the fact that the water here sort of shows you how you're a lot lower you're away from the road. So this, uh, this part of the site remained sort of relatively dry um, and the water sort of tended to wash down the site into the down towards where we found those flood deposits I mentioned earlier. Um, we didn't find much in the way of, well, we didn't find any evidence for people actually living within <laughs> the area that we excavated. Um, we didn't find, a lot of the finds were far more sort of utilitarian, sort of coarse wares. Um, we didn't find much in terms of like any evidence for floors or surviving sort of habitable structures. What we did find um, okay, this side. Um, was several lines of post holes. This again this is Ermine Street down here. Um, lines of post holes are lines perpendicular with the road, so it's sort of structures coming off the road. And we sort of think probably more than ancillary structures, perhaps associated with what we think was a lot of industrial activity that was going on from the site between during the sort of early and medieval period. And the pits, which we'll talk about more in a bit, again we think are part of those sort of industrial processes that people were were undertaking at the time. So we had yeah, this slide of postals here and then a few more possible structural remains. Um, this feature, the, these are all, again, clo <coughs> very close to the front of the site near Irving Street. So it's, if there were buildings <coughs> or structures there, they're all fronting onto the road. Um, this, be this, this feature here, sort of tentatively identified as a beam slot. It's very big um, and quite deep. That's probably it's the best part of a metre across and sort of half a metre deep. So it's, if it, so it's very big for a beam slot. But again, it's it's got you know, the vertical size and the, way the square cut sort of nature of it, which leads you to think it's probably associated with some kind of structure. Um, close to this feature, we also found some quite squared post holes with um, this, these two bits of stone in the base with Think probably packing material, sort of for around posts. Um, this is right in the base of the feature. Um, there was no, we didn't really see much evidence for what we call post pipes, which is um, sort of darkened bands going through post holes that, that are basically the very sort of the shadow, almost like a shadow of an upright post. Um, again, this line of post holes is is the one from the previous slide, looking in the other direction. Um, that's a two metre scale. Again, so you can see it's, it's good four or five metres long, this line of posts coming back from the road. Um, and they didn't show up particularly well on the photograph, on this particular photograph anyway. But there's several stake holes as well that we think are probably, again, sort of minor structural sort of evidence. Um, so yeah, this, this beam slot was here. And the line of post holes, you can just see the last couple of them in this corner here, and with the road there. And behind, the vague line sort of projected sort of along these, really, there's post holes in here. Well, we started to find lots and lots of very large, substantial pits. Um, they're mainly concentrated on, the, <coughs> on this side of the excavation, coming back. On the far side, um, they were a lot shallower, um, smaller and shallower, um, 
quite straight, straight sided, and, f and very flat based. I mean, think one where the perhaps there's sort of evidence for more of an area where people were actually working rather than uh, these large pits, which we think were for processing perhaps um, tanning pits or something, something sort of in something that would have would have been unpleasant and smelly, probably, so that you would want to stick on the outskirts of the town on the way out because it's quick and easy to escape from. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is perhaps a bit easy to see. Post, lines of post holes and possible beam slots. Um, and again, these, these large square post holes running sort of on a, on a line that's sort of in an area close to the road. Um, we didn't get that many linear features, many ditches on, on the site. And it, um, apart from one that ran back from the road and the one I mentioned before. So we think perhaps possible sort of plot boundaries, different, you know, the areas, different white areas of working. And this seems to tie in with roughly the largest of the pits where this side of this ditch, the smaller pits we're sort of starting to see on that side. There's another possible linear feature there. Um, and about this is about five metres, I think. Yeah, it's about five metres, which is sort of a good size for a Burbage plot, which is, which is um, sort of um, a plot boundary, you know, small individual plots of land. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see the sort of the light grey. This is a modern drain running here. Um, associated with the house that was on the on the site when we arrived. Um, so again, the, I put this one in just to sort of show the, the set we did we did sections through features, and we did they it can look a bit mad on site, especially once you've dug quite a few. But we we place them across features um, at points where we think we'll be able to identify um, the stratigraphic relationships between. Features. So if we've got two pits that are, are cutting one another, joints or joined together, putting a section across at the right angle, you might actually be able to see which pit came first by the way they've filled in. You'll see one pit's been uh, like chopped, chopped away by a later pit. So we dig these, we dig these sections, and, and on sites like this where there is a lot of quite dense archaeology, we often come back to sections and take little bits more out as we as we identify more features, and that helps us to build up a sequence uh, of the way the site was occupied and what was actually done on site. Um, and, and then I'd have to finish off a matrix, which I half-heartedly started on the site because they scare me, um, <laughs> which is basically a chart which shows you how the features relate to one another. It's a, um, it's a it's a representation of the, of the site using numbers, basically, and, and lines in between, and which show show the way um, the site coalesced. Um, that's another shot from from high up, showing you again these these sections that we do. So these these deeper areas are the the edges of the pits down in into the basement, <coughs> and we leave we leave little bits in that enable us to draw sections which show us the fill sequence. We've got people working around this one, so we would have drawn this face and this face. Um, it was quite nice on this particular site because the archaeology was so concentrated um, into sort of a fairly compact area. We were able to take out really quite large samples, so there were quite a few features where we took, we actually fully excavated them, you know, 100%, so which, which enables you to recover a lot more, a lot more finds and, and gives you like, a, like a full view of, of what the feature looked like when it would have been open. Um, these pits are on the on the on the far side of the site where they were shallower and smaller. <coughs> you can see there. You probably can't see quite so, but they're so they're probably about knee height, kneeling in them. <laughs> yeah, many pits. Um, the largest features were these, these really, really nice, large, square-cut pits, so more or less squared, a lot of them more or less squared in plan, looking down on them, and then, and in section as well, um, these dark patches of the fill of the features, so as they filled up, this is the material that's accumulated in them, 
uh, and you, we excavated to find the edges of the features and they show you the profile. So when this was initially dug, it would have been, it would have looked something, something like that, basically. But, um, they're very, very straight sided and flat based. And Huntingdon, because the water table is so high, um, when, as soon as you start digging, quite often you find that very quickly uh, the, the, the ground you've dug into becomes undermined as the water starts to seep back in. So the fact that these, these edges had survived so well leads us to think that perhaps the pits were lined because they certainly seem to have stood open for, certainly for some time. Um, and we did find quite a lot of, sort of dauby material in the fills which may have been sort of packed against the sides in order to preserve them and to keep them open, perhaps as tanning pits, so they would have been filled up with all sorts of horrible liquids and hides and what have you put in them in order to sort of process um, the process the material. Um, this photo here, I'm going to show you this Ermine Street up the top. So the, as, as you came away from the road, the pits got bigger and bigger. We thought we'd found quite large, this was one closer to the road, we thought this was quite nice and big and it was all very interesting. Um, and as we moved away from the road, they, they got bigger and bigger until that one looked quite pitiful at the end. Um, but, um, sort of in this section here, the, this, this pit certainly was almost, about, almost two metres deep, slightly more curved sides. And it, this was a whole sequence of these features that ran most of the way up the site, all into cutting uh, and getting larger as they got further away from the road and deeper. Um, Steve, in this corner, and Tam, who's there, uh, did a lot of these um, very nicely. And they looked, they were very, really nice features with lots and lots of um, medieval pottery in the upper parts, in the upper halves of, the, of them. Further down, the, the deposits that filled them up were uh, more organic, much darker, and contained quite a few, uh, quite a lot of burnt seeds. Um, I wrote down... <laughs> found dyer's weed in some of them, which was um, just not a clever name. It was actually used for dye a plant that was used for dyeing quite a lot. So again, leads us to think that perhaps a lot of um, like processing of hides perhaps was going on on the site, and production as well. Um, so this is, like, this is just a, a selection of them. Um, as you can see, these, these upper fills up to ground level much lighter and more mottled and mixed, which makes us think they were probably backfilled quite quickly once they'd fallen out of use. The lower parts of the sequences, again, this is a nice example, were very, very blackened, um, which, you know, which looks more like sediment that's accumulated in the feature whilst they're open and they're you know, filled, filled with water. Um, and this sort of dark organic material has sort of drifted to the bottom and settled and formed these, these early layers. And then at some point, they've been backfilled fairly quickly. Um, this one's quite nice because uh, within the section, we saw this quite quite a lot of um, more natural, what we call natural, which is the, the material that the features are cut into, and slumped in to the features, which sort of, again, suggests they've perhaps been backfilled quite quickly, or perhaps started to collapse and uh, then had to be backfilled. And you can see these, these almost vertical, vertical edges. Um, down here as well. And these are all, again, two metre scales. So these are all uh, at least, in the main, about four metres across. These, these sections are dug at the halfway point to enable us to get the profiles in two different angles. Um, and they're about a metre and a half, a lot of them are about a metre and a half deep. So really substantial features, getting deeper uh, um, as, you, as you get away from the road. Um, this was another really interesting feature that we had at the um, closer to the road. Um, this is a guy called Steve digging it. Um, it's probably about four metres across and far more circular um, than a lot of the other features. So, we've, and probably what you can see there is it comprises about three or four different large circular pits that cut into the 
Clutton's natural. And we think perhaps this was maybe a well or more like a, um, a water hole used for storing water rather than like a preserved sort of uh, industrial, or more industrial feature. The road is up here again and there was a nice, really interesting, long and thin, and very deep shaft-like pit coming away from the road that, that led into this area of pitting. So we wanted about uh, draining material off the road to sort of fill this up. And again, we will, as we go into post-excavation, we'll, then we start to um, get uh, more information about the finds and the sort of the stratigraphic sequence uh, sorted out. We should be able to say a lot more about about what these features were actually used for, and perhaps even how long they were open for. But yeah, initially. Um, it's just really interesting sort of um, sequence of events on the edge of the on the edge of the, the medieval settlement. And it's another um, another sort of probably more like a well. Or, um, this again about two meters across, and I think maybe a meter and a half deep again. Quite quite deep, strange solid feature, but with these banded sort of. Um, layers of sediment that are filling it up and this looked like it filled up quite slowly in comparison to some of the other features from about here upwards <coughs> again it looks more like backfill or material that's settled into the feature once they've fallen out of use but certainly these these deposits here looked more like water laying sediments that accumulated like in, in standing water and the, we've got a lot of um, oats and um, barley, um, bread, wheat, sort of um, uh, preserved uh, plant remains. So it's really nice sort of um, finds to have, which can tell you about the kind of activities that people are doing uh, on the site. And um, this is actually cut through. Is it one of the halves? It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you're a right few in one way or another. <laughs> um, this is uh, we we found masses and masses of pottery on site. This isn't the sum total of 13 weeks worth. 60, kilo Six, 60 kilograms of pottery. <laughs> no. There you go. Uh, which is, which is a, not a lot. A very nice uh, amount of pottery. To have. We've, actually, we've got some examples of the material that we found over there that you're welcome to have a look at afterwards. But it's all it's sort of living stanion where we've had we did have slightly earlier um, Pottery like uh, Stamford wares coming up, which sort of uh, a very late Saxon. We didn't really find much of every, any real evidence for sort of Saxon um, material, but that's probably about the earliest, so uh, probably about 1000 through to 12. Yeah, but most of it's the developed sort, so it's probably post conquest. So it's probably, yeah, so it's a bit later. Um, and lots of, lots of animal bone. Um, again, for um, quite roughly um, cut pieces, primary working um, material. We found, um, we did find ceramic building material, which does again suggests sort of structural remains in the vicinity. Again, nothing in situ to suggest you know actual buildings. Um, and we also found quite a lot of work bone. Um, so some really nicely. So well, this is actually in one of the uh, in the in the cabinet there. There's some about a needle or a pin, um, as well, and then you know, more sort of needles. Um, it's a bone toggle made out of I think it's a phalange of a thing, not of a person, uh, <laughs> but uh, an animal animal bone. But yeah, these these sort of drilled pieces again, sort of they're sort of quite rough. Um, but quite large sort of um, needles. So again, possibly more likely for you for um, more sort of, uh, rough working rather than fine sort of crochet. Of <laughs> and also, um, this is the end, end of a, um, a scabbard for a dagger, which is very late medieval, but a really lovely find. Um, it's uh, for the. This is the, the for the protecting the blade tip. If you turn it upside down, it looks like a helmet for a troll. <laughs> but, yeah, it's actually a scabbard for a dagger. But this again, really lovely um, cop copper alloy 
find with grass. So there's a real range of real range of finds. One of the earliest features on site, and one of the only features that we've I, I, I hoped this was Roman when we found it. I'm not so sure anymore. Um, so a, a ditch, um, which admittedly doesn't look as interesting as a dagger scabbard, but it's right up next. It's this feature here, and it actually ran all the way through the site and terminated or ended or was truncated about here. Um, so it's a ditch running parallel with the road, sort of curving slightly down toward to the uh, north. Yes, yeah, north there, so it's heading more to the south, at the, at the far end of the site. And it was it was earlier um, cut by the post holes associated with the structure I mentioned earlier. Um, probably one of the earliest features on the site, stratigraphically, it seems to be cut by pretty much everything. Um, we did have possibly possible Roman pottery from it on the site. I haven't seen the spot dating since we got back on site, so I don't, don't know, but it's, it certainly didn't look like a roadside ditch, it's not got a, it didn't seem big enough, this, again, it's, about, it's less than a metre wide and not particularly deep, but it was, you know, a nice early feature um, that wasn't really visible early on in the site at all, uh, we actually thought it was cut from much lower, um, but um, when we started cleaning back, again, you could just about see it, but it's fill, as you can see, it's very very pale in comparison with some of those really dark pit fills, so it's sort of, which is uh, quite typical if the feature's just been has silted up naturally, um, and also made us wonder whether it might be earlier. But uh, it's a nice, nice early find. The other features that we found, which are potentially earlier, um, and certainly earlier than the pit that has destroyed it, or the top up, was a uh, um, two partial. Well. One definitely more partial than the other. <laughs> um, but it's a human, human skeleton. So this is uh, about six or seven fragments of a skull that we found. Um, it was just deposited in in the layer of material that I mentioned earlier, the sort of the natural, the sort of sandy um, mixture of sandy material and sort of a subsoil kind of material that was um, truncated by all of the medieval pits. Um, this is just this has obviously been um, this was. It had been chucked into the ground in this state. This wasn't us. We didn't do this. <laughs> it was um, in isolation, no evidence for the re for the rest of it, for the body. Um, further to this, a little bit to the south, similar to these, about ten metres back from the road, possibly. A bit further to the south, found the, the lower half of, a, of an actual burial um, in situ. The the upper part of the body. Uh, this is probably. I don't know, it's sort of the lumbar, the lower vertebrae, and just here you've got the, um, the fragment of the upper arm and lower arm, so the, the arm's been crossed, yeah, the, arm, the arm's crossed across the chest, <laughs> and the head was to the west, and the body was laying on its back, supine, um, which is quite typical of a Christian burial, so certainly um, it's very, very, very earliest, late Roman, but we didn't have any finds, Associated with it. So it could even it could be anywhere between late Roman through to medieval. But certainly early in the pit, because the pit had had destroyed the rest of it, which makes me think it. Um, certainly, I don't I don't know whether some of it had obviously been forgotten by the time the pit was dug. <laughs> um, um, but these these are you know relatively early on the site. We didn't find it. But we did have also in the evaluation um, a neonatal uh, so. Uh, a baby burial um, that was again quite close to these, but apart from these remains, and when we when we certainly when we found the grave cut, we did start to to wonder whether we were going to be in the area of cemetery. But we so we get we go back and reclean the whole area, and there were so we couldn't see any other graves. There was, there was no evidence of any other graves, and this one was actually visible. Um, the bones, some of the bones were protruding into the pit, and so once we cleaned it up. And so we went back and had a sort of quite a long, hard look for any more and couldn't find any. So it's either a very, very truncated cemetery or it's just some outlying burials along the roadside, which is equally, probably more likely in this instance. Um, 
again, these nice, nice, really nice finds, unexpected as well. Um, and often the kind of thing you find in the last couple of days on site, which makes me panic. 